Do you know what this is? Yep, it's a record. I know, I'm dating myself. But I bought this record when it came out in 1978. When I was my student's age, at age of 14, I had to get this uh, Boston album in 8-track tape because I was lucky enough to get one for Christmas. Have you ever seen an 8-track tape player before? By the early 80s, cassette players were abundant and Walkmans were the rage. In the late 80s, CDs came out and I had to have the band out of Boston on a new CD on my new, new CD Walkman. When MP3s came out in the late 90s, I was overjoyed to spend even more money. By the year 2000, I was able to download more than a feeling in an MP4 format so I could use my iPod my wife bought me for Christmas. In 2008, my wife suggested we buy a Wii to exercise. While I have no real music ability, I've always wanted to be a guitar legend, and my wife loves to sing, so we bought Rock Band. I recently bought and downloaded More Than a Feeling so that we can sing and play together. I probably spent over $100 for one song over the, over the years, and will probably spend more when it comes out in 3D. The point that I'm demonstrating is that our world is changing exponentially during our lifetime. What will the future be like for our children and our students? The advances and speeds of change concerning technology is now rapidly dividing the workplace. The My goal today is to give you some tools that you can help teach your children or students in a rapidly changing 21st century. California has recently adopted the goals for the Partnership for 21st Century Learning Skills, which includes the National Education Technology Standards. NETS ensures that all students will be able to create online documents, collaborate, and participate in online global projects to solve real-world issues and problems. These are the tools that major corporations have designated as important for students' future employment. Engaging students' interest in learning is our job as parents, teachers, and other stakeholders to ensure that our students and children are prepared for a future that involves technology. It's ludicrous to believe that we can invoke a positive change in education by doing the same things in the same ways. Thinking that students or children can learn by doing the same things year after year with a pencil and paper is obsolete pedagogy and will create a stagnant learning environment. So, how many of you own your own blog site? How about website? How about even an email address? Do any of you know what Web 2.0 or 3.0 tools are? Well, the first Web 2.0 tool I'd want to explore is wikispaces.com. Have any of you ever created wikis? Now, I'm not talking about wiki links that you've heard about in the newspapers today. I'm talking about wikispaces, www.wikispaces.com. Wikis are powerful artifacts that can be created by teachers, parents, and most importantly, students to demonstrate their knowledge of content standards. Wikispaces.com is free and allows members to create unlimited websites for education. Members can place their words, pictures, movie clips, music, polls, and many other widgets to help them collaborate. Unlike paper and pencil, students are encouraged to participate in online learning assignments that can be viewed by all stakeholders as evidence of learning. Students do not learn the same way, and online learning environments allow for differentiated instruction to ensure that all students can learn. I have used Wikispaces during the last two years with my students and believe that it has helped student comprehension of the content standards. Students were also polled at the end of the year and believed that they had learned something very important and useful for their futures. I'm going to show you one site that was created by one of my students. Uh, these are English language learners and it, I'm sure this helped them learn and speak English proficiently. Uh, they were required to put a, a video on here which I'll show you a little bit of um, once it comes now. Well, at least you get the idea what they were doing. Obviously, and I'll fast forward through this so that you can see some of the other things is they did a weather video concerning uh, solar radiation standards. 
And so each student also was assigned a, uh, a different page and they were to investigate a different standard. So I'll just click on one of the pages and we'll see what we get. Uh, they embedded a video for all those visual learners so they could learn about greenhouse, the greenhouse effect. Um, they were also required to put a picture and then have some information in the site that they also got them from. And you can see that this student uh, obviously put quite a bit of information on there. Uh, their next assignment was to uh, actually uh, write a paragraph concerning what they learned by uh, accomplishing this uh, video and to use the discussion tab to correspond with each other so they could go back and forth and answer questions. So this is another powerful learning tool that all children can use to, uh, to learn from. I want to try to keep moving along today, so please write down any questions you have and I will try to answer them or you can post them on this blog site. Have you ever heard of VoiceThread.com? Well, VoiceThreads allow members for educational purposes up to 50 VoiceThreads that can be used to demonstrate their knowledge. VoiceThreads allow members the ability to collaborate effectively and demonstrate their knowledge by creating animated PowerPoint-like presentations. So what is a voice thread? Well, it's a tool for having conversations around media. Whether it's images, videos, documents, or presentations, or any combination of them, a voice thread can securely capture and hold an entire group discussion on one simple page. When people make their new comments, they will fill in around the edges, and the participants can even draw while they're talking, which is a very efficient way of getting your point across. Down here, behind the comment button, are actually five different ways for people to comment. By telephone, by webcam, by microphone, by text, or even file upload. Which means that if you can load this page at all, you can participate in this conversation, period. Now let's take a quick look at how you get around in a voice thread. Okay, this is an example of VoiceThread. Um, I actually read the document for um, one of my students, but let's take a listen. Um, you can scan, you can interject pictures, and you can actually comment. The Princess of Waltagen. There once lived a witch in the forest of Waltagen. Everyone in the village of Waltagen loves her because she... You can also add other slides to it, so that if I want to go to other students and I want to combine a whole class... One day in the Valley of Cindercombe, a volcano named Explosive. So I think you can get the idea that I'll show you some other sites how powerful what a learning tool this could be. So how do you think VoiceThread could be used in your classroom or with your child? I know you could write down at least three ways in which you could use Wikispaces or VoiceThread with your students or your child. Blogging is another useful Web 2.0 tool. It's free to all members. I'm at WordPress.com. There's quite a few free sites that I'll give you access or uh, to later. Um, this is my blog site that I use for my students. Uh, I, I appreciate when parents go on here and monitor everything that's going on. I want to make sure that uh, they have their feedback and they can see exactly that everything that is uh, appropriate that's always going on these sites. So uh, this is they're learning about plate boundaries which is standard 3B. I've put quite a bit of information on there for my students to learn about. For visual learners it's very easy to embed video and to put them on here. It just takes a code and about a couple minutes and you can learn about how to do that on my website at mrborden.info. Uh, I've also put more videos concerning C4 spreading and Alvin we're studying also volcanoes, so 
I wanted to make sure that I engage those students. And there's Volcano Live, and VolcanoLive.com has volcano cams around the world, so that we can actually see what's going on when we look at. And there should be, yep, there's a volcano, and I believe this one is in. This is Sakurajima, and you can see the gas is coming out, and it's refreshing every couple 30 seconds. So you can see they're all live pictures. This is sunset there. So I'll shut that down. Some other things that I can attach to it are links to obviously tests on that correspond and to our what we're studying. I can have them go to virtual websites and field trips, which I can link to, and have them explore and immerse themselves. These are some of the comments that my students have written lately. Alvin is a submersible that was created because it can reach some of the deepest parts of the ocean. Again, Ashley D. and she did an excellent job commenting and she obviously learned by watching the video. And that's really the goal. So your student or your uh, child could actually learn to create websites and blog sites where he can embed video and place information so that he could teach others or other classmates or himself or prove to the teacher that he definitely understands what they're teaching. That's blogging.